Yeah, so the first thing I would say is that the cheeks are very prominent. They feel like they're full of air and they feel a little simple. So what I would recommend for this is I would probably attach the eyes a little bit further out and then have the cheeks not so bulbous, not so full of air, and then give them just a little bit more flesh here so that he feels fatter. I mean, this isn't a bad look either to have them a little thin, but I feel like there's something charming about this look that, that isn't quite in there. It's happening a little bit up here where you, you've got the ear. I think the ear is, is a good size, but the ear is attaching lower, and so he's got a lot more head, and that's another thing that's making him look kind of thin. You know, you really have to look at the overall lines in a model to conquer it, to make it as good as possible. And I think you did a really good job on this body. It's, it's just really cool. You've got the simplest lines going all through the belly and the pants. It's great. And it looks like it looks great from multiple angles, which is not easy to pull off. Maybe give them just the tiniest crack there, but and maybe a little tiny crack down the back. Overall, you've got this great line going through that whole body. So the question is how to do that for the head. And you've got a good start, but there's a charm that's a little bit missing. So what I would do is that first thing with the cheeks. A lot of drawings have a cheated mouth protrusion where you can see around the lip and the lip sort of juts out and the back side of the mouth disappears behind the lip. So right here, that other side of the cheek disappears, wraps around that mouth and, and disappears. Great drawing trick. Well, how do you do that in 3D? You have to have a little bit more real estate to the lip. This section of the mouth has to create like a cylinder and bump out from the face a little bit more. And another way you can tell this is that the bottom of the nose is attached almost to the same location this way as the ends of the nose. And so normally what you'd want is for this to be attached a little bit further out, probably be thinner and then come back here, and these to be attached here. So then this mouth cylinder is coming out a little bit more. I could face a little more dimensionality. What you have is a little bit flattened. This whole bottom section is a little flattened. And we want to introduce just a little bit more cylinder action there where it's coming off of the face, and you can get that cool dynamic that you cheat in 2D so well. There's like more cheek mass on this side than this side, so not really fair for us in, in 3D to have to try to get that, but one thing that can help is, you know, doing this cylinder thing, and then sort of coming from this, it's almost like a, a clear demarcation of that cylinder area, right? The cylinder is coming out here, and then the cheek comes out again, so there's like another protrusion, another thing wrapping around, and so it would be like that, and then you'd have this sort of a definitive break, and then that cheek should come out. So basically, I would give him more stuff down here, and I take out some of this. One thing is you've got to look at the exact shape of the curves. And your cheeks are a little bit round. The, the apex of the curve is, I don't know, maybe like here. Whereas in the arc, it's a little bit lower. Maybe the apex is down here of that curve. So it's also cheated because this one is a little higher than this one. So, of course, you've got to make a judgment call. I think that he would look a little more sophisticated to have it be not a perfect round, like a ball, like it almost like a ball that, that was shoved in there. I feel like your eyes are seated a little too deeply in the head. He is very, very front-facing, which is cool, but I think too much. And so his eye is, is seated almost like perfectly face facing forward. So I would probably bring this stuff out so this comes out a little bit. You want to be able to see that other eye at all times. What I'm seeing here is just that it's a little bit of a cave. That eye is disappearing back there. And we want to make sure that that's visible from lots of angles. It's not too bad the way you have it, but I think it would be better to get this whole eye out just a little bit. And then especially this inner part here to come out a little bit. That would really be good for this guy. The expression itself, going back to the mouth, is a little muted compared to this guy. He's uh, very, very bright. What things are really contributing to that brightness? I think you've done a good job with these eyes. We could add just a little bit, but uh, one key thing that sort of pulls back on the joy of that this guy is feeling is the mouth shape. So what you could do is just drive that corner back until it's literally disappearing behind the cheek. So you're coming like this. And you have to really watch the shape. If you look at the shape of this lip here, 
that is very important to telling the emotion, right? So what you have is a little bit more lippy. It comes down a little bit further, and it doesn't quite meet this line. So this tells a different story. It tells a different emotion than that over there. This says a little bit more muted of a situation. So I think you could amp this up by taking that into here and then literally raising that lip up and even getting in some of that angle change. See, there's a break right here coming in right there. And then giving the lip just a little bit of a, a forward, like a fin, like a, a fanning out a little bit. And then you expose a little bit more teeth, which I think would be good. You've got it in the bottom teeth. Be sure to get that angle on the teeth. It's really cool. There's a little bit of angle going there, whereas yours might be a little bit more jutting out. So if you get that angle in there, you're exposing more teeth. That's going to look really sweet. This line is going to be a little bit deeper because you're pushing that forward. This line is going to be a little bit further out you know, maximize that flab, and you're going to keep this chin, it's going to be separate because it's going to be part of that, so the area, that, that cylinder area that's coming out. When the lip comes out, you're going to take that profile, and it's going to be sharper like this. You're going to see less of the lip. Right now, you've got it so that it's a little bit less uh, sharp. Uh, the angle of the upper lip is a little more facing us, and so he lacks some of that hyper smile. One other cool thing about the art, is that uh, the shape of the nose is really cool. And if you look at the highlight, that's going to tell you something about the shape that you're dealing with, those highlights. So one of the cool thing you do to the nose is to get this little nostril part a little bit separated from the shape of the upper part. So if you can start to introduce some of this change here, hook this into it a little bit more, and then make more of this outer part of the nose where you're turning a corner here, and that corner is creating almost like a sharp edge all the way around. And then you're going to get this highlight here. And that highlight's going to sort of carry across. You're going to have like an underside to the nose. It's going to shade differently from the upper side of the nose. You kind of need more geo to really do it. But just to give you an idea, yeah, he's a little light. And once, you know, once he's neutralized, he is the same across both sides. This will be a little bit easier to add geo. It's a little trickier when it's posed. Something like that. So I'm just showing a little before and after. You know, it's just making more of this shape and then having the nose be more complex shape because it's got the, uh, the nostril area that's a little bit separate. And I'm not going to add the geo here to make it what it should be, but you need to get a little more shape in there, which you can only do with a little more geometry. Something like that. So here's the before and after. You see how I'm creating that, that highlight there, separating out this from that. It makes a big difference already, just like moving a couple of points. You know, you're going to take this down, you're going to, you're going to pump this up a little bit. Some of the geo is limiting for your shape possibilities. Uh, one thing I do is kind of fuse all this geometry here so I can crank the eyes around and just make them non-spherical so I can just get them where I want them and then worry about getting the spherical eyes later. So again, like moving this forward a little bit, getting this back a little bit. It'd be great if there was a row that could go all the way around there. That, that's pretty important. Right now it's not possible to connect this to this. Now he's starting to get a little bit more of that that fullness in his face. So already he's looking a little chubbier. He's looking a little happier. Cheeks, I think, are a little more successful. One thing is, look at the ear. It actually influences the perception of the pose. So if we select the ear, everything joins together into how you perceive an emotion in a pose. And one thing we did on the movie Robots, even the robots, when they would smile, we had these, like, things where their ears were, these little gears, and we just moved them up just a little bit. And it was all these 
subtle things in their face that sort of gave you that emotion, that feeling of emotion. I'm just going to crank them up just a little bit higher on the face. And darn if that doesn't look more smiley than the, the lower ears. I mean, it's a strange thing. Isn't that, isn't that kind of fascinating why that looks so much more smiley? It's sort of like a raising, like the, you know, the smile, the emotion sort of like pushes things up. You know, I'm not saying that you would move the ears that far. I'm just saying that like planting them further gives them a more uh, happy appearance. Now I'd probably move these guys out here. Let's see. Probably help. Maybe I'll move this one out. I like the hair you've got. It's really cool. It's not exactly like his, but I, I like it. You know, if you wanted it exactly, you could find some way to, like, swoop this geo up here. I kind of like what you have. The thing, too, like, you don't have to follow exactly what someone's art is. It's a good idea to try just because there are technical limitations that are going to keep you from doing it. So it's kind of good at the start to try to do that. You know, in the end, you don't have to follow it exactly, and it's more important to get something that's appealing. So somewhere here, you've got the teeth, right? I just want to show you how teeth angle is so important. It makes such a huge difference in your perception of a model. So if we start to angle those teeth in, this is what my teeth don't do. They kind of come out a little bit. Generally, it's more appealing when they kind of go in a little bit. So we could do something like that. All right, so we'll do our little before and after. All right. Yeah, he's starting to look cool. I think I could maybe crank this up this way a little bit. Maybe we'll make a little bit more out of this sharp lip there. Bring this like that. Sometimes I want to go to that, you know, the non-smooth version to see what the points are doing. Maybe you want to rearrange the points a little bit. Oh, you got that attached there, or or it's a child of it. Okay. I'll just bring this over here. So his eyes get a little bit brighter now. We could get them even brighter if we emphasize the tallness, you know, because it's a little taller than it is wide. Again, we don't have to do exact, but I think it might make him a little peppier. So maybe we'll bring this in just a little bit. Maybe we'll bring this up to emphasize that shape, that rising shape right there. Gary, I like that you've got the flab going over the this. This is nice. If you had a little more geo, you could you could do that a little bit more definitively, but that that's good. Oh yeah, so I talked about maybe bringing that lip out a little bit. All right, so there's our before and after. The cool thing is once you know what to look for, a few minutes of modeling, like literally, how, how many minutes was that? 20 minutes, 30 minutes of modeling. I mean, it makes a pretty big difference. I mean, forget the fact that his eyes are poking out of his face, right? That wasn't that way before. But if you can ignore that, the other changes, I think, make him look a little happier, look, make him look more like the art, a little peppier, and don't have the cheeks so sort of inflated. If you were able to create, you know, a row that, went up through into there, that would be great, but it's going to be tough to connect that. It's just that it's such a prominent feature. It's just that you, then you've got four or five rows having to all connect right here, which is uh, not the best scenario. Whether you could terminate one or two over here, I'll wind up with fewer right there, but it's just getting that uh, break there. I think it would be nice for him. Make sure you think of this shape, too, as a you know, what you see if you squint and you just look at the white, it's a little raggedy, so probably what you could do, probably like connect them a little bit more. So you have that shape or that height variation, but not so different. Widening the teeth is normally a little good, too, because if you get them too narrow, he starts to look like a rabbit, you know. I'm just going to widen them a little bit. I like to work on the teeth all fused like this, because then you can work on the overall shape and... And then I can turn off that feature so that I'm just changing the one tooth or turn it back on and do the whole shape. So being able to, like, read that white space, you know, as a single 
white unit, I think adds to the appeal. Yeah, so I think that versus that, you know, these teeth in comparison now, they look a little a little anemic and disconnected. I think that helps as well. Seriously, Gary, good job. 